Hello, and welcome to Walking with Jesus and with Mark. I'm Jim DeVore, the pastor of Trinity Christian Church in Little Rock in California. And we are just taking a daily look at the book of Mark and seeing Jesus and trying to find out what we can learn about Jesus as the Messiah and as our Savior. And then asking ourselves this question, um, as we observe Jesus and observe him working with the disciples and the people around him, we as followers of Jesus Christ, what do we learn about ourselves that we need to be doing? What are some practical things? So we are in Mark chapter 8, and we are in verse 14. Mark chapter 8, verse 14. Now they had forgotten to bring bread, and they had only one loaf with them in the boat. And he cautioned them, saying, Watch out, beware of the leaven of the Pharisee and the leaven of Herod. And they began discussing with one another the fact that they had no bread. And Jesus, aware of this, said to them, Why are you discussing the fact you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Having eyes do you not see, and having ears do you not hear? And do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves for 5,000, how many basketfuls of broken pieces did you take up? They said to him, Twelve. And the seven for the 4,000, how many basketfuls of broken pieces did you take up? And they said to him, Seven. And he said to them, Do you not yet understand? So what just happened is, is Jesus had just fed the 5,000, and uh, he's got he and his disciples back in a boat. Uh, they're going somewhere else, and um, they seem to have a short-term memory loss problem here. Uh, they've forgotten to bring bread, so they're going to get in a boat. They're going to their next place, and they haven't brought any food with them. So whether they're planning on eating on the boat, it's going to be a long overnight boat ride, or whether... Um, they were worried about the next day, provisions for the next day. In any case, somebody forgot something and didn't do their job. Okay? So now they've forgotten to bring bread, and they only had one loaf with them in the boat. So one loaf wasn't going to feed 13 people at a minimum. The 12 disciples and Jesus, and who knows what other entourages along with him. They, the Bible says women traveled with him and helped them take care of various food issues. And, and that's the way they ministered to Jesus and to the, to the other men as well as the women were just wanted to follow and learn as well. So it says in verse 15, he cautioned them saying, watch out, beware of the leaven of the Pharisee and the leaven of Herod. Okay, so they're thinking about bread. He knows they're thinking about bread. He, he in a sense, speaks to them about what they're thinking, but he's talking about something different. He says, watch out, beware of the leaven of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. And they begin discussing with one another the fact that they had no bread. So they're listening to Jesus, but not really listening to Jesus. They're really concerned about this lack of bread. To which then Jesus finally says to them, Why are you discussing the fact you have no bread? Do you not yet perceive or understand? Are your hearts ardent? Having eyes do you not see? Having ears do you not hear? And do you not remember? What is Jesus getting at? What he is getting at is, is that these men... Um, are caught up in the immediate, in what they do not have, and not uh, thanking God for what they know is uh, been taken care of for them previously. This is this is just a famous, uh, famous problem of ours. We're worried about the immediate. We're worried about the future, and we forget about how well God has provided for the past. Look at how Jesus answers this to him, because he says, um, "Why are you discussing the fact you have no bread?" Verse seventeen. Do you not yet perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Having eyes do you not see? Having ears do you not hear? Do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you take up? They said to him, 12. So you remember that. Remember, that's the first time. We read that a couple of weeks ago. So the first time he fed thousands, there was 12 basketfuls left over. Okay? The second time he said, and, and he said, um, and when I broke... And the seven for the 4,000, when I broke the seven loaves for the 4,000, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you take up? And they said to him, seven. And he said to them, do you not yet understand? What is Jesus striving at here for the disciples? First of all, what do we see about Jesus is that um, he is willing to, to help the disciples come along to catch up to him. Okay? He's willing to work with them. But at the same time, he's going to challenge them. And he's going to sense be pretty tough with them and say, hey, you guys should not be so caught up in the immediate here. You shouldn't be worried about what food we're going to get when we get to the other side of the lake. Okay? If I can feed 
5,000 people with extras and then 4,000 people with extras with only starting with a little, that can handle our group of 13, 14, 15, whatever it is. What do, what do we as disciples learn in this? What should the disciples have learned? And, and hopefully they learn it is that, you know, if you're in need, look to Jesus. Look to Jesus. They should have just turned to Jesus and said, hey, we forgot bread. Uh, we know you can provide. We know you're not worried about it. We just want to trust you and leave it up to you. There would have been a simple response. But apparently they were pretty worked up over this lack of bread. Let me just ask you, what, what, is, what is it that you're worked up over? What is your lack of that you're worked up over? Is it money? Is it time? Is it people? Is it a relationship you lack? Is it an understanding that you lack? Is it a situation that you lack? An event that you lack? A moment that you lack? Is it a job that you lack? What do you lack? Are, are, you, are you pretty much just completely focused on that? Trying to solve it? Trying to fix it? Spending too much time on it? Jesus says to you, do you have eyes that you do not see and ears that you do not hear? Do you not remember? When you've been in need before, how has Jesus provided? Think back over the things that Jesus has provided for you and relax and reflect and know that your Heavenly Father will take care of you again and again and again and again. Jesus said to them, and he says it to you in verse 21. Do you not yet understand? He's going to be there for you. He's going to be there for you. Just ask him and trust him. Let's go on to the next story. Verse 22. And they came to Bethsaida. And some people brought to him a blind man and begged him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the village. And when he had spit on his eyes and laid his hands on him, he asked him, Do you see anything? And he looked up and said, I see people, but they look like trees walking. Then Jesus laid his hands on him again, and he opened his eyes. And his sight was restored, and he saw everything clearly. And he sent him to the home, saying, Do not even enter the village. This is a simple story with way too much speculation poured into it. Why did it take Jesus twice to heal this guy? Why didn't he do it the first time? Well, of course Jesus could have done it the first time. Did he not give enough dose of his power? Jesus is God. He knows what he's doing. The issue here is not what Jesus did in the miraculous manner. Not that, why did, why did Jesus have to do it twice? Clearly, he did not have to work on the man's eyes twice. So the question is, not do we figure out why Jesus did it twice from a physical standpoint. No issue there. We know that he could have done it once. He didn't even have to touch the guy if he didn't want to. He's already proven that in his ministry and ability to heal without being on site. So why this two times? Why ask the guy? The guy hasn't seen clearly. Why does he share him again? We're really trying to find that answer out for the guy. And guess what? We don't really get it. We don't. Mark does not tell us. We don't have any details as to why it, Jesus did it twice for this guy. What we So since we don't have that answer, since it's not clear, uh, just move on. <laughs> it's okay. Don't spend your hours rabbit trailing an answer that the Mark, that Holy Spirit, through Mark, didn't give us. And that apparently Jesus didn't bother to spend a lot of time teaching. Let's instead... Take a look at what we do know about this story. What we do know that after he stored his sight and he saw clearly, he sent him to his home saying, do not even enter the village. Again, this is one of those times where Jesus is not trying to draw a crowd. He just wants the guy to go home clearly, celebrating his home, seeing his home, enjoying his home. But let's not make a big scene about this because Jesus wants to have, spend more time in the village without being swamped by people or wants to be able to get on to the next place without being swamped by people from the village. Again, the issue is not what we can't figure out. Let's see what we can figure out. Jesus said to him, do not even enter the village. Well, thanks for joining us. I appreciate you doing that every day. Hey, if you're watching this in the uh, month of um, May 2020 and you're caught up with us, I just want to invite you to and you're in the Antelope Valley area, especially in the Little Rock area where we minister, and you're a member of the church or have been watching us online and watching these things, I want to encourage you to join my wife and I um, from 1230 to 130 on Sundays at the church parking lot. Uh, we are just there 
uh, praying with people and glad to see you and connecting with you. We're wearing our masks. Uh, if it is, you know, May 2020, you know why we're wearing the mask. <laughs> we're in the middle of the COVID virus shutdown. And so um, we want to encourage you to come by. If you have only been coming to Cornerstone Churches <laughs> through video and we've never seen you in person, oh, we would love to meet you uh, this Sunday or any Sunday over the next several weeks. Um, we're going to be there from 1230 to 130, my wife and I. And uh, just come in, stay in your car. And uh, as you pull up to us, we'll have our masks on. We'll, we'll talk. We'll share some information with each other. Just catch up. And then we will pray. So we're looking forward to seeing you this Sunday from 1230 to 30. The church, by the way, is 8533 East Avenue T, Little Rock, California. So glad to spend this time with you.